the inhibition of complement C1S with sutimlimab in patients with cold gluten disease results from the phase three cardinal study on behalf also of all the co-investigators as shown here and co-authors. So just let me give you a short introduction to the pathophysiology of cold gluten disease. This is shown in this cartoon. Cold gluten disease is characterized by autoimmune reactive IgM, typically uh, um, reacting with the I antigen on the red blood cells. They bind to the red blood cells, and what they do, they activate the classical complement pathway via the C1 complex. The C1 complex then, um, the activated complement system, then activates C4, C2, forming the C3 convertase, and C3 convertase then uh, cleave C3 into C3A and C3B. And C3B opsonize red blood cells, and this leads to extravascular hemolysis, typically in the liver, but also to minor degree to intravascular hemolysis, mediated by the membrane attack complex, causing intravascular hemolysis. Uh, Sutimlimab is a monoclonal humanized antibody against C1S. It blocks C1S and therefore it stops the classical complement pathway and therefore blocks extra and intravascular hemolysis. So based on positive uh, data from the phase 1B trial, um, we started the Cardinal trial, which is an open-label phase 3 study of sotimlimab in patients with cold gluten disease and a recent history of transfusion. The key eligibility criteria shown here being baseline hemoglobin below um, equal 10 grams per deciliter, active hemolysis, at least one blood transfusion within six months of enrollment, exclusion of secondary forms of cold gluten disease, so-called CAS, and no treatment with uh, rituximab within six or uh, within three or six months um, uh, um, uh, it, before the start of the treatment. The patients were screened, all the eligibility criteria were proven, and uh, patients were vaccinated. And then on baseline, patient was dosed IV um, at day zero and day seven based on body weight, and then maintained every two weeks for 22, 26 weeks, followed by a safety extension period. The primary endpoint of the trial was a composite responder analysis based on an increase of hemoglobin, uh, at least of two grams per deciliter from baseline, or normalization of hemoglobin equal or greater than 12 grams per deciliter, and the absence of transfusions from week five to 26. Secondary endpoints also included improvement of the anemia from baseline, uh, improvement of the hemolytic activity, improvement of the quality of life, and uh, effect of transfusion um, uh, use after the first five weeks. So the next slide shows you the patient demographics and disease characteristics. Altogether, 24 patients were enrolled, mean age being 71 years, a slight dominance of female patients, 62%, that had uh, 3.2 units of blood transfused prior six months of the inclusion in the trial, and um, uh, almost two-thirds of the patients had at least one prior targeted therapy within the last five years. Baseline hemoglobin being 8.6 in mean gram per deciliter. And all the other characteristics were in line with patients with cold gluten disease or in trials with co in, for patients with, with cold gluten disease. So this slide shows you this, the results. Um, so Timlimab was efficient and uh, showed rapid response. Here shown by the um, uh, reduction of the bilirubin. Bilirubin is the exquisite marker of extravascular hemolysis in cold gluten disease. And it's, it, it, it went down immediately after the start of the treatment within hours and normalized rapidly within one to three weeks. With the reduction of the hemolytic activity, we saw a dramatic improvement of the quality of life. Um, um, it was seven points improvement within the first week, which is dramatic, and they already started with a mean um, uh, baseline fat uh, fatigue of 32, which is really uh, bad and shows the, dram the, the dramatic um, situation of the disease. And the mean uh, improvement of the fat fatigue scale was 11 points um, from baseline to treatment assessment time point. The hemoglobin also improved. Um, uh, by one gram within the first week and by uh, two grams within, uh, by week three. The mean hemoglobin increase being 2.6 uh, gram per deciliter. Along with this, we could clearly show that complement activity um, was blocked, as shown by the WISLAB uh, classical complement pathway, say, going down, um, as well as uh, 
with the reduction and blockage of the C3 convertase activity, we saw an increase of total C4 in the two normal levels. How about the safety? Here's the safety summary um, of part A of the Cardinal trial. 22 patients had at least one AE. Um, seven patients had at least one uh, serious adverse events. None of those serious adverse events were related um, to the study drug. Interestingly, because it's a, a risk for patients with untreated cold gluten disease, you observed no thromboembolic uh, events during the trial whatsoever. And also, being a risk for, um, for complement inhibition, we saw no meningococcal infections. All 22 patients that completed Part A enrolled also into Part B. Here are my summary, uh, here's the summary and conclusions. So Timlimab is a first-in-class selective inhibitor of the classical complement pathway. So Timlimab demonstrated rapid and sustained efficiency in cold gluten disease. It prevented hemolysis, significantly increased hemoglobin, and improved the quality of life. Targeting C1S in, uh, of the classical complement pathway represents clearly a novel therapeutic approach for the management of cold gluten disease and has clearly the potential to change the treatment practice for patients with cold gluten disease. Thank you very much for your attention.